Boom, 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 boom. Welcome to John Boy and Jake Radio Special Memorial Day Weekend Edition. Jake's in South Carolina. I'm in New Jersey. BBD's in New Jersey. We're coming to you through Zoom. We're recording on Monday night. Going to your ear on Tuesday. It's John Boy and Jake Radio. It's John Boy and Jake Radio. We're going to talk about some stuff with our mouths. Okay, everybody, welcome to John Boy and Jake Radio. Radio. We are in the radio womb. And uh, it's Memorial Day. We hope you all had a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. I hope we I hope you got to do exactly what you wanted to do. Jake, how was your Memorial Day weekend down in South Carolina? South Kakalaki, baby. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a full full 10-hour drive down. And we... Uh, I'd say there's a little bit of a fear factor. We, A, we're driving down, and you wonder how long of a day it's going to be. We hit a chunk of rain. And normally, Jim, I'm a big, and I think this is road trip protocol, but you want to, you know, have your best chunks to start. Like every time I've driven cross country, you know, if you hit the road early, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., you want that first, like, four-hour chunk to just yam out. And we didn't have that. We That's brutal because you're right. I'll pause you right there. Yeah. If anyone goes on a road trip, you want to wake up, leave at five. By the time nine o'clock comes around, you want it to feel like, damn, we haven't even started yet. And it's still only 9 a.m. We're cruising. That's how you want it to feel. So yeah, it feel we've like covered that. some country and it's still the morning. Like, let's get breakfast. We're doing this. And we did not do that. I think we were like two and a half, two and a half. And it was just like, oh, boy, we had a potty break, and then we had lunch, and it was like, you know, this trip's getting a lot longer. But then on, we cranked. I think we had two three-and-a-half-hour sessions. So we got here. And, dude, uh, the other thing that was really daunting, um, besides, you know, spending four days with your faux in-laws, is uh, we had – Knock on wood, good weather down here, man. We we came down, and the weather forecast was rain every day and potential flooding. Um, so, I mean, you start, you know, uh, everyone's getting a little nervous. How many board games can we play? How uh, how many drinks are going to be flowing? Uh, but the weather's been really nice. We've spent a lot of time outside. Noodle the Doodle Dog's having a blast. Uh, Jess the girl is happy seeing her family. My mom's here. We're... Where everyone's having good time, sharing all old war stories, and uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's good to get air. And you and I are very much on our high ground as city folk. That if you are listening and you haven't lived in the city during the pandemic, uh, eat two bucks because everywhere else has not been living the pandemic the same way as New York City. Yeah, eat so many bugs. Make a bug sandwich if you want. Yeah, and just eat it. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Good to hear. I'm glad the road trip turned around. Everyone's getting along. No fights. Everyone's getting along. I didn't realize this is the first time my mother was meeting just stepdad. Uh, he's a good dude. Big Southern accent. War Eagle. Auburn guy. Well, um, so they. How's Doodle doing the dr- in the drives? He's oh, he loves the drives, bro. He's come cross country like three times now. Um, he has a blast. He's normally we put him back seat and he puts his head in the middle head seat and he's just having a ball. So he was good. And yeah, right now we're just in that we're in a little bit of a fear factor territory. I mean, we've been eating gross all weekend. You know, it's it's, you know, a lot of food and drink. We're at that point. And uh, yeah, you know, we got to wake up early and hit the road. So it's, you know, are, are we going to have some drinks tonight? Is anyone going to be pushy about the drinks tonight? Um we had like a weird in between lunch, dinner, like personal pizza sesh. I don't really know where that came from. It was good, um, but you know that's if if I'm having a full dinner, I'm gonna be very uncomfortable, and that's fine, and that's what's gonna happen. Um, so yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how the road trip tomorrow uh, goes. Um, yeah, yeah. What's uh that's what's great. the what's the vibe in Jersey? been good it's been good we did friday just hung out my brother and his girlfriend are here um you know big italian dinner my mom made pasta or my mom made her meatballs and chicken parm mm. and that's like a a classic and i 
ask for the sauce recipe because the meatballs I can uh, make. It's the sauce that I need to know the uh, recipe to. But, you know, it's Italian sauce. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. No mm. measurements at all. And it's like, I get that because I don't cook with measurements either. That was good. When played some disc golf, <clears throat> played the best back nine I've ever played, like a of a nine course. I'm not good, but we we always play two tee shots and choose your best because we're not right. good enough. We don't play often enough. Like we play once every six months, maybe. So it's like you don't play often enough to care. Like, no, I just I don't like I don't want to have to live with one that I just yank. Right. There's no fun when we play this little. But on the back nine, we said, let's play straight up. Wow. So it was and getting I played heated. The, it was getting heated then. No, 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 no. It, it was, was it was more of a t- it was a time thing. We, I had to cook dinner, so we needed to get back quicker. And it's in the forest now, so you don't want to lose discs. So right. it was, uh, but I it, playing straight up on the back nine is the best I ever played. Five over, so I got four pars. That's good pretty for good. me. It's pretty. I good. had some gr- creative shots. I was happy with that. Um, it's rainy and weird here, and like you know, we're at the beach, but no one's going to the beach. It's so cold out. Uh, yesterday I cooked fast food style. My new my burger recipe for everyone. Right. My uh, relatives, my cousin. And uncle came over, uh, you know, I buy sirloin, I buy chuck, I buy bacon, and then I put them in my food processor and I make my own ground beef, fresh ground beef, make them into little meatballs and you put them on the stove top, flat top grill and smash them with a spatula mm. and they get super thin, like in and out burgers, like LA McDonald's. And then you do a double stack with cheese in the middle. So I was whipping them up on the, on the. And the flat top, whatever. Those were delicious, though. The bacon makes it doesn't taste like bacon, but it's a little smoky, crispy to it. So good. Um, that was good. <clears throat> and then today, I got super melancholy, dude. Nice. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why. I was telling Katie like I'm gonna funk right now. Um, I don't know what happened. You know, usually when I when I have to leave La Valette, I had a history of coming out here from California. And then the being for two weeks vacation, all the family see everyone. And then like that would, and then it was like, all right, now I got to go back to California where it's still going to be 90 degrees in September. And I still work a shitty job and don't have enough money and have no future. And I would get like, it would be my most depressed day. I probably told you about it a lot. My most depressed day of the year. Right. Sure. I don't have that now because good job, good life with Katie in city, but I still felt like something weird. I was telling, and I and I'm a little nervous about going back to the quarantine life in the city because we don't do anything, dude. Yeah, yeah, like, but you know, I, I, I also I told, think I also think that we've been doing so much nothing that it feels like this was almost a fair reward. Um, yeah, seeing all family those, sun- and, and being outside like this much, it feels like okay, like this. This was enough of a payment. I'm okay to go back to the city and quarantine. The sun really drained me. But yeah, I just feel like for like Katie's sake, like, you know, move to the city because she wants to explore the city. Right. Like have a social life. And I'm like, hey, like, do you want to come back here for like I offered? Like, I don't know. Like, should we like come here and set up shop for a week and a half? I'll bring my whole computer and set up. Do you want that? Because you can just like, you know, go on walks with my mom, hang out with Lou, you know. Or so I'm a little nervous going back to the city. I I'm living fine in quarantine. Me and Katie are having a blast together. We're like enjoying each other's company tenfold, but I'm yeah. a little worried now. Like you get to see the sunlight and some fun. Now we go back and we're like, damn, okay, back to this. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's going to be interesting. Are we craving this now? Cause we kind of weren't craving this before. Cause there was so much of a fear factor and like we just recorded talking Yanks and I did a, a whole thing. How like, yeah, went to a gas station, got ID, the lady like grabbed my passport and stuff. And in New York city, that would be a like absolute sin. Like I'd like leave the passport and down here. I mean, it's, you know, people are just more relaxed. I mean, you see some masks and stuff, but people, are clearly at a different magnitude than New York City. And then at the same time, we kind of feel like the bad people because we feel like we're one of those bouncing balls that's potentially spreading it. So it's uh, it's all scary, man, for, for me. And I don't know if it ties into that melancholy feeling, but uh, I, I mean, the baseball thing is wearing on me a little bit um, just because it's it's so out of our control. 
And, you know, you and I, I think it's kind of funny, you and I, <laughs> when we do have kind of a bicker off or if you're mad about something, I kind of have this laissez-faire style of like, I'm like, well, don't be mad about it. And you're like, well, I can be mad about it. I'm like, yeah, you are, but don't, you know, you shouldn't let that harp on it. But uh, I, I'm kind of there, dude, where I just, I can't fully shake it. Like, I, I woke up early today because I was like, you know, we could, if they play baseball this year, we are going to absolutely kill. If they don't play baseball this year, uh, we're still going to kill. It's going to be in a very different fashion. <laughs> and it's just, it, it's going to be climbing the tree in such a different way. It's like, if, if uh, I don't know where the that climbing the tree analogy just came from, but it would be basically like if we had climbing the tree in such a different way. <laughs> yeah, if we <laughs> if there was one. if there was built on stairs to climb the tree, um, or if it was like a tree that didn't have any branches until like halfway up, and we had to figure out different ways to get up there. Um, so it, it just sucks that we're not in control of that at all. And there was good news this weekend over it, so I'm still leaning that way. But it's uh, it's tough not to think about. You think because we set up a doomsday board meeting that that's why it's like you, you've hit this point? We're like, fuck, we're actually planning for this? Does that sound Well, you, you also know how I think, and I, I understand that it's wrong sometimes. And, and part of the reason that I... I want to schedule it later in the week is hopefully they figure it out. So that meeting turns into a, how are we going to attack baseball this year? Um, Cause in my head, it's also like, oh, are we going to spend two hours talking about what we're going to do if there is no baseball? Uh, but you know, I do understand planning to a degree. So um, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I just, I'm like, I keep depicting the movie scene. I'm hoping that the good guys come together and figure this out. And that was basically the baseball tweet that came out this weekend that, both sides are still passionate about getting this done, and they know how important it is to the game of baseball um, because it, it truly is. <laughs> yeah. I had to break uh, – and for anyone listening, we're not going to do sports and news and all that today because we are in our respective vacation home still. But we just wanted to have a little, like, 30-minute rap sesh for John Boy and Dick Radio and, and, and that such. So this is what it is. Um, and now I forget exactly what I was just about to say. Mm. God damn it. What were you saying? Baseball, uh, baseball coming back. Stuff. News. Well, anyway, news. if baseball does come back, yeah. uh, I had to kind of break my mom's heart a little bit yeah. because I think opening day is like July 4th and that's her big weekend down here where everyone comes. And I said, Hey mom, if that's like the first series and opening day, I can't, I'm sorry. Come yeah. another weekend. But we got to, like, be in the office. We got to be on call. Like, I got to be making, you know, we got to, like, announce, not announce our present, but, like, you know, I, I that is, like, bunker down mode. Yeah. Um, which sucks. And I, she totally understands. She's not, like, bad about it. But, uh, yeah, I was like, that's, it's a little bit disappointing. Because, you know, I told her, like, hey, I'll make 4th of July work. You know, I'll, I'll come down. We can do it like we're doing right now. We have right. producers. We have help now. But if that's the first week of baseball, right. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to need the setup and need everything. Um, and, dude, I think if that's the case, then you and I uh, need to uh, utilize the office as safely as we can. Yep. You know, like Big Cat and Roan are on Barstool are still going to their office and recording from there. Yeah. They're just trying to do it as safe as we can. So we'll have to figure out that route. But, uh, you know, if the baseball starts, our fucking – content schedule will crazy yeah and i'm i'm like i'm i'm very mentally prepared for that and i obviously i want that at this point because you know the alternative is you know we're going to be ad lib in big time and you know you're going to see me covering a lot of bundesliga soccer because i'm i'm just a a toilet nostradamus there a little bit so um, but yeah, and, and that's, uh, you know, I, I think we're both getting the same family treatment. Like, don't be scared to shoot down for a weekend if you want to. And it's like, honestly, ideally this weekend is a blast and then I'll see you in November. Um, cause hopefully yeah. we're, we're cranking out some, uh, I gotta, I gotta come back down on the six to get the dog. Some of the best of ball. Best ball. Yeah. I gotta come back down here in two weeks, June 6th, I think to get the dog. Doogie. Google. Mac Doggo. Mac. We're very happy with our name. My mom watches that show. Highlander, Outlander. Outlander. She fits the demographic. It's for older women. I said Mac Doggo. Not that you're, was... you know, sorry, oh, Linda. I did that. Okay. Sorry, Linda. Oh, I said that right away. 
God. I said I, 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 I apologize right away, but oh. I'm saying it's not. I am like the oddball. It's, Jeez. It's it's definitely made for uh, women above thirty. Okay. Well, she just clipped that, so good save. Um, but yeah, what was the best thing you ate this this weekend? Would you say it was the chicken parm? Are you gonna say your own little burgers? Oh my Dude, the god! Burgers I make a, I, the burgers I make are really good. I'm pretty proud that I did that. Uh, I've never I never made a good burger before. You know, just get yeah. like a burger and put on the grill. But these are good. Uh, my mom's my mom's meatballs. It's good. Mm. Oh, she got these little banana bites in the freezer. Those are good. Mm. Had ice cream one night. Felt like such a bag of shit. Like Katie and I were going to sleep. Yeah. And we like bloated and just gross. So you gross. know, a, a fucking charcuterie board before every meal. Yeah. It's like just disgusting. Hey, do you know that my sister um, and her husband and their two kids are moving to New Jersey? You've mentioned it like in passing, but I didn't know it was like official, official. Official, official. They have a date. They have movers coming. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have my little nephews and like, you know, Halloween. You know, you get to, I get to be. Enjoy holidays again. I think there's some holidays that when you don't have, for me at least, when you don't have kids around, it's like I loved Halloween in college, but now I, you know, you enjoy it through the eyes of kids, or, or just like you know, let's take the kids, the our, nep- our nephews for a day. Super excited. They're coming here. They're gonna live in the house I lived in last summer for oh, like nice. eight months. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And yeah, the yeah, Yankees will win that. the World Series the day before Halloween, and then you go out with them Halloween. So that'll be perfect, even. That is a little tricky, but yeah, no, I'm excited about that. And also what I'm not excited about is our other little cousins are here. And I don't know sure. if you know this reef, reef and Koa have a little brother. Do you know that reef and Koa? I don't know if I did know that. Uh, he's like three months old now, four months old. Okay, cool. His n- name is big uh, baby. Jet. David. Jet name is jet, but the nickname is Teddy. Cause he looks like a teddy bear and that's kind of okay. sticking. I can't hold him. Hmm. So, like, it's brutal. It's my favorite little age, you know? Just yeah. like a ball of ball of fun. I can't put them on my lap to bounce them and, like, make it's faces. It's like all you do is hold babies. Yeah. Yeah, Katie, Katie and I both. Katie and I both, like, so it's yeah. brutal. That sucks. That's about my life right now. But I did beat Reef and Koa in this game I invented on the driveway Idiots. today. They beat me fair and square. We had to try it. Like Luke subbed in, and I was like, you kind of have to try to beat them. So. Sure. It was just hockey with a baseball bat and a tennis ball. I had a nice, uh, you know, we, we've we been, you know, spending the days outside, and if it's not raining, making like a, a little fire, telling telling stories. Like I mentioned, uh, just stepdad. He, he, he likes he likes when I'm around. I think he's normally a lot of a lot of gals around the house, so he likes sharing his old war stories and just just talking about stuff. I don't mm-hmm. even know. Like he he mentioned some like car and boat stuff that I'm like, you gotta know. I've got none of this, yeah, um, but yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he poured only one of the nights, which is pretty good for us. He poured like a big nightcap cup of whiskey. And it was one of those, like, my mom's never computed that situation. Like, she's never seen that. Uh, and she was like, she's like, Jake, you can't drink that much whiskey. And I was like, ma. <laughs> like, uh, I don't, you know, put the numbers together. Crunch the math on this. Yeah. Um, so that that was kind of a funny moment. Um, you are, did you, you're a nightcap person, too. Oh, dude, I gave two haircuts. I helped good. assist in haircuts. Your hair's looking great. Katie cut me. Um, took two hours. Well, this is not the great. It came out fine in the end. Took two hours because she remember how long it was. So she yeah. attacked it with scissors. I came up looking like Ringo Starr. Just the bangs Ringo. were so short, but the the you know that that mullet from London. The oh. sides were so long, and I I was like, oh no. And then we got the buzzers out, and she buzzed me up. Did you watch any of the golf thing? No, I don't think I would have even if like Was it like on no. in the background of the O'Brien house? No. I, I know zero point zero I just know Eli was tweeting about it, but I don't even know those tweets. So yeah, I Eli, know that I know that Tom Brady ripped his pants. Eli joined Twitter, uh, which was fun, and he came in. I, I liked it a lot. He just came in and he's tweeting. 
Like no no nervous athlete stuff. Like worried about tweeting some dumb. Like he's he's like let's go Peyton. And he was and he took like a picture of his TV and he got like a Frank's Red Hot ad. So that's definitely what started it. But then he was just using it as a regular Twitter person. So that was fun. Um, his opening but, tweet from Hoosiers was great. I mean, strong opening tweet. And that's a scary moment. And that's a scary moment, that first tweet. Um, and, yeah, there's some corny athlete stuff, but there's always going to be that. But, dude, it's funny, and I just saw this because I, I watched a little bit. And, dude, I, I think I mentioned this to you somewhere. Maybe I didn't. But, like, everyone's kind of got their in-between spots where it's like, hey, let's go for a boat ride. And then you come back, and everyone kind of collects themselves for half hour, an hour. And, like, you know, a couple people go read or somebody goes snacks on something. Like, mine is normally watch sports, and there just isn't that. So there's been a couple just, like, me looking at a wall being like, this is normally I'd be watching sports. Uh, But the golf thing was kind of fun. They had everybody mic'd up. It was pretty entertaining. Uh, Tom Brady was sucking to start, like, just hitting balls in the woods, hooking it. And then he sunk a shot from the fairway, and that was pretty cool. It was very... Very Tom Brady. But, dude, the, the part that just made me laugh is the numbers just came out. And all, all the sports guys, Cowherd, Simmons, they always freak out about the numbers, and we're probably going to get there one day. Um, but I think the number that came out was 5.8, which was, like, the exact same number as the Jordan documentary. <laughs> so it's like, well, we found how many people are missing sports. <laughs> it's about yeah. 5 point million with cable. Uh, so I just thought that was that's pretty good. That's pretty funny. That's the same. Yeah, I didn't tune into that at all. We we watched two episodes of Hoarders, which result, resulted in some bickering mm. uh, because I, whatever, I don't like that show. Sure. I don't like the way they tackled the subject on that show. I think the whole thing's kind of shitty. Heavy. Yeah. Oh, want to know heavy? Do you know there's a, did you hear about the murderer that's on the loose at large right now? I don't think so. Like to kid, kid from Newtown went to UConn. Uh, Peter Manfredi or something like that. Twenty three years old. I mean, this is heavy. This is he's at large right now. This is a fucking crazy story. But Luke, since Luke went to high school in Newtown and knows kids, it's sure. fucking tragic. So this is a weird tone, but it's crazy because he's at large right now, dude. So yeah, he had a dorm room in uh, UConn. And on the walls are like, first Adam Lanza snapped, then Thanos snapped, now I'm going to snap. All this scary shit. And supposedly, people people reported that to the authorities, supposedly. Mm. And they, they're they like, well, we don't know what to do. So he was riding his motor. So this is all alleged and put together from multiple news stories. But we've been following because Luke has ties to Newtown. And it sucks that it's Newtown because the national news is just going to run with that connection like crazy. But, you know, so... I'll just give you the bullet points. Driving his motorcycle crashed. Some dude uh, got on his like 18 wheeler and in the neighborhood and went to pick him up. Like, hey, you having car troubles? You need a ride? He murdered that dude brutally without a gun. Um, Knife or machete or something. I don't know. And um, then he went to another house and and uh, woke the couple up at like gunpoint. And it's 23 years old, like 6'3", 200 pounds kid. Uh, woke kid up at gunpoint. Woke the husband up at gunpoint. This guy's doing a news pro- conference. And was there from Friday night until Sunday morning. Held these people hostage in their own home with guns. All right. Then he goes to, I don't know where he went, but this kid that is from Newtown that we know the families, you know. Right. And he knew this kid apparently was part of allegedly was part of some stuff uh sure. like you know underbelly not terribly underbelly but you know he knew he had guns and right supplies of sorts he went there and he murdered this kid mm. and kidnapped his girlfriend took him in the car with him stole their car and drove to pennsylvania and this was like yesterday let her go thank god but collected a bunch of guns and supplies from that kid's house that he murdered uh, and then now he was last seen in a Pennsylvania town walking the railroad track with a backpack full of supplies and ammunition. And he's at large. And for like three, two days, the national news wasn't reporting in it. No, like it was like, w- are we not going to find this kid? So it's a crazy story that's developing now that we've been somewhat ahead of the media because yeah. they're not. And maybe it's best they're not reporting it. 
Yeah. But now it's all out there. Now the FBI is on his case. It's all out there. Um, but yeah, dude, it's killed two people already. Uh, held three others hostage or kidnap or whatever. Uh, and is at large just in the Pennsylvania woods in some town in Pennsylvania. Fucking yeah, bizarre uh, story. Tough JJR split. I half thank you for telling me, half hate you for telling me. Um, I knew you would, but I'm just, yeah. that's, I don't, it's just what's, it's what's been like we woke up and, right. and have they found him yet? What's going on, you know? That's the go to almost. That's like the background conversation piece when there's like that, that quiet minute. It's like, oh, any update? And that's exactly exactly that's tough. And it's it's Newtown. It's Yukon. There's a right. lot of connections. And it's fucked up. BBD, had you heard about that un, until now? No, I, do, I don't know where in Pennsylvania it was, but I have ties to a few places in Pennsylvania. So concerning. Well, I, can, but. I can tell you this small town by a forest. Um, his name is Peter something. But yeah, the the last they saw it's crazy. The last they saw him was these train tracks and this and the train tracks go through this town. Hmm. The the image they showed of him at first was like crazy, but uh Yeah, fucked up story. Peter Manfredonia. So everyone be on the lookout, I guess, and not in a joking way, because it's insane that they haven't caught him yet. Yeah. But he's still at large. And the the videos of his bedroom, the dorm room, are sucks. Oh, so you see, now it's getting a lot of attention. I guess his parents just did um, a press conference urging him to stop. Now it's an now it's an official like national news manhunt. Mm. Um, I'm trying to find the town he was in for you, BBD, because it's right on the New Jersey border. Willington Derby, that's where it started. I mean, it's gone, it's gone like across three states now. What the fuck is the town in Pennsylvania? I don't know. But it's crazy. Staring at the blank page. The blank page, page before you. Down. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, I mean it was, uh, it was it was it was looming over your weekend and now it's looming over everyone's weekend, which is fair, but it's also news, so we get it. East Stroudsburg. That's Monroe where I went County. to summer camp every year. So What's that? That's where I went to summer camp every year. Sleepaway camp. Yeah, either he was like hopping on a train or he's going into the yeah. woods to like hide up. Because I, I was there's Google, a lot of I mountains Google. over there. Yeah, it's like a lot of wilderness and shit. So I mean, I'm I'm like half interested. I'm half proud of the media for not running it. Half scared that they could have warned people like in the area a lot better yesterday. So we'll see where we'll see where that goes. But yeah, not the usual topic we talk about on here, mm. dude. How about John Krasinski selling some good news? What are your thoughts on this? People have so many opinions. Have you heard about this? I heard about it. I don't really have any opinion on it. So he started some good news, right? He said right. he had the idea for it six years ago. Katie and I did this on our podcast, Just Talking. You just read happy headlines and uh, ask people to send in their good news, and he would share it. I never watched it. I'm not interested in that. It felt very pandering and, like, fake uplifting, you know. But he hosted it, and CBS just bought it from him. And now he's going to have he's not going to host it anymore. He's not going to be part of it. So there's a couple different things that I find interesting here. Sure. Why the fuck did CBS buy this? They are a news station. They can literally just report happy news and make a segment and they don't have to buy the show. Yeah. Like any they can just the reason this exists is because CBS doesn't do happy headlines. They only do terrible ones or the news in general. So that part I don't understand. Why would you have to buy this? People are really, really mad at him because they say it's in gen. It, it's not. It's ingenuous or whatever. In ingenuous. Got it. Know. Like he was making a show all happy headlines to cheer right. people up during a pandemic, and it felt good spirited and good natured. And now he just turns and, and makes a buck on it. Um, 
which I understand because, dude, if if someone he yeah, I mean that's it, that's just a crock. I mean, any anyone would if anyone got the offer that I'm sure he got from CBS or whoever it was, you're probably taking it. Yeah, like, and like sorry, he, he made money shit. playing Jim in the Office, and then he did Leatherheads, and then the Tom Clancy stuff, and then Leatherheads. Um, you know George Clooney, what a football player. Yeah, people are mad at him, but it's like he. W- you're, no one's gonna watch this after quarantine, so I'm more just like, why the hell did CBS buy this? They just yeah, like the name I, "Some Good News" so much they couldn't just call it "Happy Headlines" or something, or come up with some new name. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. That's and you wonder. I mean, hey, Krasinski is loaded, and he's probably got a legal team in something. So if one of those networks did run something like that, they could probably set them up, sell up for a good legal battle if they really wanted to. And then I guess the other thing there is, you know. I mean, John Krasinski, l- listen to what I said. I mean, it's Jim Halper. How many how many people threw on The Office in the background this weekend because you're at a family thing where you got, you know, older people, younger people, where The Office is kind of just the fun thing you could throw on in the background. I mean, John Krasinski is John Krasinski where, hey, you know, you buy it from him, you get it, and you get the headline that they bought it from Jim from The Office and something. So I get it. I, I don't know. feels like... I, I kind of get what the ingenuine crowd is saying. Like, you you were spo- supposedly doing this to be happy and have fun and, you know, shouldn't have money tied to it at all. And now you're profiting off of it. But I think literally 99.9% of the people, if they did this and then got the offer, they would have taken it. Yeah. I, I think the the... If you're tuning into that show, which 7 million people do, you're kind of like uh, naive enough that like, I don't know, like some bullshit happy headlines really like lift your mood. It's felt empty to me when I watched yeah. little bits and pieces. But anyway, uh, uh, 7 million people, dude. That's, I mean, that's a lot of money right there. So I, it's just a weird story to me. Yeah. And I, I don't know. The the devil's advocate in me has a little like how do how do normal people think that aren't me? And I could see myself saying something like, all right, you know what? Every day I want to hear one uplifting thing from around the world. And it's like, boom, there it is. Yeah. I didn't watch it, so I can't really yeah. say. If it was like, Jerry in Montana just got his second granddaughter, mm. I'd be like, oh, this is bad. But if it's like, researchers have cured this type of cancer and should be eliminating that from the future, you know, that'd be like, awesome. Sure. Great. So I'm... I would go on whatever it was. If it's like just individual people's <laughs> good stuff in their life. Nah, whatever. Okay. That's some news. Yeah, there's a lot, man. A lot of twists and turns for me. This uh This is just what we've been talking about here. Hoarders into a heavy Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, murder, hoarders. What else have we been playing a lot of card games? And I found a new song I like. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. Like a Luke Cool song? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, no. I'm a sad. It's actually, it's not a sad song, but it's a slow, slow song. Okay. Yeah, because I know a lot of times you link up with Luke and Luke will play something and you're like, oh, that's actually pretty good. Is this song popular? And Luke's like, yes, it is popular. And then you're like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. This song's popular. I like it. Yeah, yeah that does happen a lot. See? But no, that's not. That didn't happen. It's just I found it on my own. I sent it to Nick. Talking folk, we might do an episode on it because the guy has an art ban- album coming out in like a week. Nice. We uh we did talking sports yesterday. It was kind of funny. Um and dude, kind of this web we're weaving now. Uh, because it was me and Bobby Skins. Uh, we did it earlier. Uh, because Memorial Day stuff. So we're thinking about letting Keith do like a response episode, which might be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see. It. We'll see how that goes. But um. I don't know. We did our episode and we talked about some of the main sports topics and every league kind of had stuff going on, which is kind of cool. Like NBA is talking about coming back golf thing, uh, baseball, big week coming up. We talked about Jack Flaherty and Jeff Passan two two friends of ours now. Um, and, uh, it, it was kind of an interesting situation. So Bobby tweeted out the episode today and passing DM me and he's like, Hey, you want to give me the spark notes on what you said? <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> this is, this is a weird world. Um, but yeah, if anyone saw that, uh, pass and did his article and, um, you know, he, he did it in a, I think he was trying to do a fun way to try to do a CBA negotiation article 
And so he cracked a couple jokes in there, and Jack Flaherty replied, and he's like, how are you joking about this? We still haven't gotten an offer, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's one of those, like, both sides are right. Jack Flaherty is a young man who's concerned about his livelihood and his career, uh, and Jeff Passan's trying to write a fun article about CBA negotiations, which he never wanted to write. So, uh, But it's, uh, man, the, the web we weave, they say. Did Passan like your spark notes? Yeah, he did. He did. Um, we, uh, you know, we're we're always door open, and maybe we'll talk about it on Talking Baseball ad, uh, but I'll I'll save it. Okay. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. Because Passan's given me shit before, and I take it like constructive criticism. Like I don't right. care. Right. So like we should be able to give it back a little if we want to. And I don't even know if you wa- you did or wanted to, but he should be able to. The relationship should be fine that way. You know, if you wanted to be like, hey, I'll cut you straight, Jeff. He was fine with my spark notes. He's there. Yeah, we'll talk a little after. Cool. Sounds good. I think that's all. I'm going to go back up upstairs and see what they're doing. Maybe there's some more frozen bananas I can gnaw on. I'm excited about those. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm just, by the time this is out tomorrow, I'm going to give the people a little more free money. Better the day. Better the day. Better the day. Better the day. Uh, 3-0 and in the Bundesliga. Don't know if I've ever bet it before, um, but I, we're going to say I'm undefeated. I'm at least undefeated in 2020. 3-0, um, and free money. Uh, we read all the facts. We read all the books. We checked all the documents. Um, Very impressive. Congratulations. I mean, the freest of money. And I'll just I'll pass it on for tomorrow. It's Bayern Munich to win tomorrow just straight up over Borussia Dortmund who I think we bet against the other day um it's almost an even payout and Bayern Munich is one of the teams we recognize so Bayern Munich to win tomorrow free money dude someone from the Bundesliga reached out to us good oh man I have no idea where it was did you know that Jess like half believes in psychic types type stuff and the psychic the psychic told her that like soccer is going to be one of our next big breaks. So, well, we, we, yeah, yeah. Remember, I had that big. I remember I had the meeting with the big, big fucking soccer yeah. team. Yeah. So maybe that rekindles. Enjoy your free money. Yeah. Soccer big break. Awesome. Cool. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Different kind of episode. We'll be back on uh, Wednesday with a normal kind of episode. Hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. And we will see you tomorrow. Another episode do I do because all my ladies that be giving it up and as what you do and everybody that be giving it up and I've. Let's ride. Come on. Let's ride. Ooh, baby.